What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be breaking down one more track from my EP Forest Tales which I released on Lo-Fi Girl. But this is a special track, it was a collaboration with the legendary Lo-Fi producer Eldre. If you haven't checked out Eldre before, he's got a huge YouTube channel, he's released all sorts of amazing Lo-Fi remixes and original tracks and I would definitely recommend checking him out. This was one of two collabs I made with him that we put on the EP. So I'm just gonna break down how he made the track, what I did with the stems that he sent me, and how I finished off the beat. So for those of you who haven't heard the track yet, I'm gonna play a full demo first, and then I'm just gonna go through the project file and a theory behind the track and show you how I made it. So here is the demo. So this is the mastered project file for this track. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth that went into building the track before we got to this point, uh, but this was the final finished mix. It's probably gonna be the last track I break down from this project as well. Generally, when I'm making a single project, I have sort of a unity in the workflow and the way I make it and the tools that I use to make it, which I then try and break free from in the next project. So for that reason, I'm not gonna break down every project on this EP because you start to see a lot of similar themes. So I think, with this last track, I'll cover all the main sort of themes of the project. But anyway, here's the breakdown. So starting off with the atmosphere, as per usual, we've got a soft vinyl crackle, this time laid in with some field recordings from a coffee shop that pitched down, so that the voice is all deep and distorted. But again, uh, adds sort of character to the track. Little sounds come in and come out as the track progresses. So next up, we have the main instrument group for this track. Uh, two different groups for instruments, and this one contained the main chords melody and little layers and stuff that blend in as well. So the key of this track was F minor and we had this main chord progression that played throughout. So it was using the Imagero piano. I think all I did was get rid of the hammer volume uh, and that's it in terms of what actually went into the VST. So the chords here were effectively a 1-3-6 chord progression. So we had the F, the C and the G sharp which makes up the F minor or the 1. But I also had the A sharp here as well, uh, so if you blend them all together, you effectively got an F minor 11, but without the E flat. So this is what it sounds like. As usual, much playing block chords, blending a bit of melody into the main chord progression as well. Next up we have the three or the A flat major. So this one we've got the G sharp, the D sharp, and then the C, making up the A flat major. But also to bulk out the chord a bit, make it sound a bit wider, I've layered in another G sharp and another D-shot there as well, with uh, an F 
there, just this melody. Then to the next chord, which is the six or the D flat. So this is made up of the C sharp, the G sharp, and the F. But again, I'm blocking it out by duplicating the C sharp and the G sharp. Uh, and this one. Then effectively on the next pass, we've got the same chords again, the one, the three, and then the six. Uh, but this time the three is played a little bit lower. So we've got the root here, the G sharp, uh, D sharp, G sharp, C, and then D sharp was played lower than it was uh, here. So that's it really for the main chord progression. So next I duplicated the Imagero piano and I've just played the D flat or the last chord of the three chord progression, uh, as well as some little melody notes in there as well. But I've cut out the low end and added some RC20 for a bit of retro flair. Uh, just a sad piano preset, and then some filter delay on the top end of the spectrum. So when you blend it in, it just adds a bit more variance to the progression. And rather than having the delay on the main track, which would get a bit too much, I can just have it on a duplicate track uh, in this sense, and it works really nicely. And then finally, I've got one more Imagero piano. This time it's got the lead melody on there. So if I solo that as well. So that's got super ambient because it's got this big convolution reverb on there. It's got an auto filter taking some of the top end away and some of the uh, subs away. And then you can hear some reverse textures in there and that's coming from Portal, uh, just from this macro grains effect, which has got a reverse delay on there, very subtle uh, because it's quite an intense effect, but you can still hear it quite a lot. Um, so that's what's giving it the reverse textures. So you sort of hear it there subtly as well. And then in the same group, I've got these two synths, which I think I've talked about before. Uh, but if not, they are uh, just some ambient synth sounds. So both of these are from the Ulfa Arnolds Stratus. If you don't know who Ulfa Arnolds is, he's a composer uh, and musician, part of Chiasmos, which is an electronic music duo. Um, but yeah, effectively he's got some really great Spitfire audio VSTs. They are quite expensive, geared towards more sort of, I guess, film and TV music. Uh, but I really like the synth sounds in this and it's got some really nice piano sounds in the same VST. Uh, but yeah, effectively just some ambient pad sounds. Nothing crazy on there. And then finally in this group, I've got this vocal shop. So all this is, is uh, lots of pitched down ambient vocal sample drone sort of sounds. So I pitched the sample down and then when I do that often you lose a lot of high sort of character. So I added this Fresh Air plugin. If you've not heard of it, it's a free plugin that brings out sort of airiness in vocal samples or instruments, uh, sort of saturating and bringing out some of the higher frequencies. So that's just a great little addition. This is it with, you take it off, you can hear it sort of gets a bit more muffled and muted. Next up, dropped on some convolution reverb just to give it that uh, reverb tail, just a standard Ableton convolution with the St. Albans Cathedral preset, around 30% on the dry right knob. And then I've used Portal again, but this time it's just a simple delay. There's nothing crazy going on here. Uh, just one of my presets that I've made. Straightforward delay sound, no reverse textures or anything like that. And then on top of that, I've added this Master Wide More preset in Ableton. Uh, something I occasionally throw on if I just want it to be a little bit louder and just an easy way to, to change some of the compression and settings on there. And then finally, this wide stereo sound. It's not the most advanced widening sound, but with the utility in Ableton, you can just crank up the width, uh, crank it up right up to 400%, just give it this nice wide spacious feel. So all together, you get this sound. And then on the master bus, what I've added is just a auto filter sweep, which I often do. So here, as it builds up to the drop, it's cutting the lows. And you'll also notice there's a sort of choppy sound as it builds up, and that's just this portal 
again dry wet uh, automation so that's cranking right up as it gets towards the drop uh, and that's a uh, another setting which was i think it's the first preset that you get when you open up portal it's just like a choppy effect uh, and it's got some reverse textures in there usually it's too much to use on a piano when i'm using it in the track but when it's building up to a drop like this it works quite well it makes it a little bit chaotic and then it resolves as it gets to the drop so that's the first bus instrument group number one uh, on top of that, we've got a, another few instrument effects. So the sort of bell sound again, we're a big feature in this project. Uh, so we've got this Ableton uh, brush bells hits preset with some overdrive, compression, auto filter and auto pan. Uh, as I mentioned before, I've used this preset on a, I think a Dusty Records track as well. So if you want a more in-depth breakdown of this preset, uh, I've talked about it more on that track, but this is effectively all it is. It's an Ableton preset of a sort of sine wave with some distortion, uh, like a bell sound, some compression, etc. And that blends in with the Helenko plugin. So the Helenko plugin is one of the Felt Instruments plugins. Sounds like this, very nice sort of chimey bell sound. I tend not to use the uh, reverb and echo delay in the felt instruments because I find them a little bit too dirty and intense. So I cracked the reverb right off uh, and I've added just a convolution reverb from Ableton. Again, an auto pan, moving it from left to right and I've cut the high ends. So then together they sound quite nice. And then lastly, in the instrument bus, we've got this flute sound that Aldro sent over. So I dropped this in wet as is. Uh, Eldre had effects like delay and stuff that were laid in there. Um, so I've just dropped it in. It's a really nice emotive flute sound with lots of cool characteristics. And then all I've done to that is added some of this uh, saturation. That's it. This British colonizer I think I've talked about before, it was just a free, easy to use saturation plugin. And then on top, of all of those in the group. I've just added this J37 stereo, which is the uh, just a reel-to-reel -reel stereo plugin. Adding a bit of uh, tape sort of sounds to it. It's very subtle, but I like to layer it into a lot of tracks. It adds a little bit of saturation, a little bit of wow and foot of sounds very subtly into the mix. So that's the instrument two group. So together. That's what you've got. Uh, and then next up onto these sort of drum sounds. So here we've got a like a texture uh, that we've textured into the track. I think I might have used the same texture on one or two other tracks in the uh, EP. It's just some sort of random percussive sounds laid in with this white noise that comes in and out. So that's that, just a little layering, uh, followed by the kick that Eldre sent over. It's a nice punchy um, lo-fi kick. And I've not done anything to that in the mix. And then finally, we've got the uh, main bulk of the drums. So we've got this snare and the shaker that Eldra sent, which is sort of hi-hats and shakers and stuff blended in. And then on top of that, I've just layered a couple of different percussive sounds. As per usual, just adds a bit of texture to the snare. And then finally, we've got the bass which was a, just a recording from my P bass. And on this one, I went in and pitched around some of them because it was slightly out of tune, which is why I had the tune on there. Um, but it was just using this amplitude for preset and I go DI, nothing too fancy there, just a simple sound. But with that, I've got this Soothe uh, with the side chaining. So if you uh, click sidechain or left here and soothe, go here and pick what you want to sidechain it to. So I've sidechained the bass of the kick, 
but rather than reducing the whole volume of the bass, it just ducks out the frequencies where the kick kicks in. And then for the mastering bus, uh, it's just a typical mastering bus for the time. Uh, so I had EQ 8, which is making everything below a certain frequency, uh, mono. Next, I had a Soothe, which was getting rid of some of the harshest and muddiness in the low end. Followed by Gulfoss. I've not really got a go to set in Gulfoss, I just sort of tweak it and play with the uh, amounts until I get what I want, really. So in this one, I was getting rid of a lot of the brightness and trying to recover and tame some of the low end. Next up, I followed it with a little bit of compression. So first I have just a quick, fast acting compression that sorts out usually the kick if it's a bit too loud. Followed by a glue compressor, which isn't really kicking in on this one. Next, I've added the gentle whip preset from EZ9. Again, it's not something I usually do uh, on the master bus. Usually I'll do that for an instrument bus. Um, but in this case, I, for whatever reason I went with it and it seems to have worked nicely. Uh, followed by a low latency limiter, which I've boosted the gain to slightly. And maximizer to get to that minus 14 LUFS threshold for Spotify. And that's the master really. So that was the full track. Uh, it's the final project. There was a lot of back and forth in the making of it. Uh, but yeah, I hope it was a useful breakdown. There will be more breakdowns to come, but they'll be of some of my newer projects and newer tracks. So if there's any, ever anything that I release that you want to hear broken down, please do let me know in the comments down below. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.